Hey guys, I'm back to show you the next book. This is gonna be our second tutorial um, where we stitch signatures together and make a thicker book. So we can make them small or we can make them big. You can make it whatever size you want. Um, because it's coverless, it's really up to you and up to the paper that you have. This is one that I just made from our Anselm bookbinding kit and I use the book linens that come in the kit. Then I also have these other size books. These have some antique textiles in place of the linen. It just adds a nice little touch to the cover. So let's talk about paper. All paper has grain, and the way to tell which direction the grain is going is just to fold it and to, to see which side kind of boings back at you and which side comes together easier, like it wants to fold. So this side for me is the bouncier, boingier direction. This one is like really settling in, so it's a lot smoother. It really depends on the paper. I use Strathmore drawing paper for most of my books. This size is following the grain direction. You can see how the, the paper is laying nice and flat. This size is against the grain. So maybe you could see how it's kind of a little bit more round there. If you can see, this one is puffing up a little bit, whereas this one's laying pretty flat. So I find that in the end, my books, whether they're covered or not, it takes very little time as I use them for them all to sit and lay flat. I'm gonna make this size. It's the same paper, and you can see this one's laying really flat, and it's really well used and well loved. I'm gonna start folding the paper. So I'm just gonna go over this. I fold from corner to corner, pull back, go across, I crease this with the back of my nail or whatever I have around. All right, and I'm gonna put my finger down here so that I don't tear the paper before I want to on a part where the fold is not. I want you to keep in mind either what you plan to use it for or what kind of book feels comfortable for you, what size you like, what kind of details you like. Each folded sheet is a folio. Each folio has two leaves either side and four pages. One, two, three, four pages, two leaves, one folio. So I'm just gonna do a few more here. So if you're using this book for a particular project or if you want a certain number of pages in it, then Calculate before you start. If you don't know how big, then you can just keep folding and stop when it feels right. So I fold it in pairs and then I will tuck one pair inside the other and see how I feel about this edge. And I like it, I don't think it gets too triangular. So I'm gonna sew four folios in each signature, which equals 16 pages per signature. Right. That feels good. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, times eight is 56. So I have 56 leaves. So the next thing that we're gonna do is measure for our sewing. You only need to have one of your folios, otherwise you're gonna be slipping and sliding as you measure on a loose stack of pages. So you can go in and out, and just like in the first tutorial, you could stitch in and out however many times you want, but because we use these pieces of fabric or these linens, it's going to impact your cover. So of course you can make these shorter, you can make them longer, you can decide whatever you want, but they are going to be in the front. So I think for these four and six inch books, doing two linens is nice. On this one, I made a lot because I was playing with these vintage pieces of fabric and um, it looks cool too. It's really just a bunch of playing. So the linen tape, it varies from an eighth of an inch, I guess, to a quarter of an inch. Uh, because you may be cutting fabric you have at home, you can measure and make it however you want. Um, I tend to stick to that quarter inch thickness, probably because I'm familiar with it. So I'm gonna measure in a half inch from top and bottom and making sure my pencil mark is on the fold because that's where I'm gonna be putting my holes. So I'm gonna move up, I think an inch and a half so 
inch and a half for my first line and then I'm gonna make the stitching half an inch. And you can look back and say like, are those too close together? Which I kind of feel like mine are. Um, are they too far apart? Is this how you want it to look? So of course you can always change it from here and it's best to do it before you've made your holes. At this point, I can always erase the pencil. So. But I think that looks a lot better. It's probably best to take another signature, line it up, make your marks where you've already measured your first, and then we'll put this in the back. Make sure you tap your pages together so that they're nice and square. And now we can just kind of connect the dots. So there's a much greater chance of going straight across. And then turn your pages so that the side that you're pinching is closest to you. All right, so I'm gonna go straight across from mark to mark. And now I've got all my guides here. And I think I'm gonna take a colored pencil and just make some marks down here. And I do this, so if I was to put my book project down and the pages were to get mixed up or from drop it or whatever, I know the direction that each of these goes. Because we're measuring it by hand and we're making marks by hand, if this turns around, then we could have a little shift. That wouldn't be really nice in the book. So I make a little line and then I know how my pages are supposed to be lined up. So now you can take your thumbtack or if you have a sharp needle or if you have an awl or whatever you may have to make your holes. I'm gonna set my pages back. And now we're poking through a lot more holes this time. So if you have a piece of cardboard or something that you wanna put behind instead of your hand, you could do that and just kind of twist into. So you wanna make sure these pages are as aligned as you can make them so that each of your holes goes right through what will be your spine. I'm just gonna take my thumbtack and make the holes on each folio. Okay, so as with the first tutorial, you can take your needle through these holes. It's a little bit tedious to go through all these things, but it may make your sewing easier if you decide. All right, so I'm gonna line them all up and I'm gonna make sure my magenta dot is in a row. See, I mixed a few up here. So that is a nice little trick to help you out. Okay, so I put four folios in each signature. This can benefit you in a, in a few ways. So the more pages you group together per signature, the less hole poking you have to do and the less stitching you have to do, the less back and forth. But the other thing that it does is the more times you go across, the more knots you have. And this is slight, but the thicker your book. So if you are a scrapbooker, if you like to glue things in and add thickness to a page, you may prefer to not have as many pages grouped together. In which case, we've already made our holes, so you could just take them apart and have two folios per signature. So this will give you more room to work in your book. I like to glue things in, but I also like to do a lot of drawing and writing, so I don't like my spine to be too chunky. The more signatures you have, the more triangular your book is to start. It'll be more like this. The fewer signatures you have, the tighter your spine and the more straight it will be. And this is how our books are that we do at Peg and All. We like to make this really tight and square, assuming that most people are gonna be writing and drawing and knowing that it can easily fit some glued bits in there. I'm gonna keep my signatures at four folios. All right, so I'm going to use this old 
textile because my other one was a little bit too threadbare and it kind of came undone. And the thing is, I'll battle with certain old materials because I love them, but if it can't move or if it's tangling you up, it's going to make your stitching a lot more difficult. So if you are using an antique textile, if you are using something old, make sure that it's sturdy enough to hold up to being so thin when you cut it down to fit in your book. Um, and also to being moved back and forth. So I'm gonna cut this, because this guy's a little sturdier. All right, so here are my new tapes. And I'm gonna to stick to this rose-colored waxed thread. All right, so I'm threading my needle. I think I'm gonna advise to leave like three and three or four inches at the end here. All right, I'm going to double it up and make my knotted side a little bit longer so that I don't have a huge excess of thread. So I like my dot to be on my left. So I'm gonna go down through the first hole. And we're just gonna go in and out, in and out like we did in the first tutorial. But we're not gonna go back around. We're just gonna go up and stop at the end. I'm gonna make sure that everything's tight. So in the beginning, it might be good to always check your tension as you go. We don't wanna see it look like this. If it's wax, it's gonna be a little snug to pull, so you might wanna pull each one. Just make sure that your tension's consistent. So once I'm done sewing to the end, for just the first one, I'm gonna lift up my loops and I'm gonna slide my fabric through. And I'm gonna make it a little shorter on the side that's facing me because I'm gonna need that extra thickness for my spine. Now I'm gonna pull this back so the tension is consistent. I'm gonna add my second signature. So as you add your signatures, it's important to know that the first and second are gonna be different from the rest. Once you get to the third, you're gonna to start to understand the pattern. So the first is simply this. We have the knot on the end, we go in and out, we put our linens in and we're done. The second, you're gonna make sure the pencil marks that you made on the end are lined up. Make sure your fabric goes over your next signature and hold it by putting your hand in the center of the next signature that you're adding and then you're going to be holding the rest of the book together keeping the side that you first sewed on toward your body all right now I'm going to go down through the end hole making sure I'm coming out through the center it's going to wrap around your fabric, it's gonna wrap around the corners of your book and make sure you don't pull too tight when any of that happens. It's also gonna probably get knotted depending on what thread you're using. So just be aware of all those potential happenings. All right, so I came up through that and now I'm gonna go underneath this loop, making sure not to go through my fabric so that my fabric can move when I get to the end so I could slide it back and forth. You also wanna make sure you don't pull your fabric all the way out because feeding it back through, while doable, is not fun. So I went underneath this prior stitch. I'm going back down. Pulling it kind of snug. All right, now I'm gonna come back up through the next hole, making sure not to sew through my fabric. I'm gonna go underneath the loop making sure not to put the needle through the fabric. Having a rounded book binding needle is really great for all these little details because when you have a sharp needle, you can kind of snag everything. So that's a nice detail. All right, I've gone underneath through that loop. I'm going back down and through, making sure these guys are not stuck. And then I'm gonna go back in through my last hole on that signature, pulling it snug we're gonna move on to the third so at this point these two are not connected and that's just the way it goes at the end we could tie a knot so I have my third signature I'm making sure my pencil mark is on the left I'm putting it underneath my fabric 
I'm going to put my hand inside the center, pinching together the rest of the pages. And I'm making sure my first one is still toward me. I'm going to go down through the outside hole. And come up through the next. Making sure not to sew through my fabric. Pay close attention. We're going to be looking at this X. Imagine that there are four quadrants. One, two, three, four. So these two are closest to me and closest to the first page that I added. We don't want those. These two are closest to the page that we're adding. So we're always going to be sewing underneath one of these. We want to go in the farthest one from the direction that we're coming from. So I'm coming from this side. I'm going to go underneath this quadrant of the X that's closest to the page that I'm adding and farthest from the direction that I'm coming. There's a balance between making sure you've pulled your thread tight enough, that your tension's really nice, and making sure that you're not pinching too tight that you can't navigate what's there. All right, so I've gone underneath that quadrant and now I'm just gonna go down and through, making sure not to sew through that fabric. All right, coming back up. We'll take a look at that X again. So on each signature that we sew, we're gonna be basically choosing the same corner of that X. Once you get that down, all will be right with your book, maybe. So we're going to go underneath this, making sure not to sew through the fabric. Going through, going back down, pulling taut, making sure there's no loops here. Back to the end. This little loop that connected the first and second page, we're going to go underneath in the direction that we're sewing. That's called a kettle stitch. And that's it. That's it for this one. It really is the third signature that starts to create the pattern for what we're doing. So I'm adding my fourth, making sure that my pencil mark is, in the, is on the same side, is on the left side. And I'm going to go down through the outside. up and as you go make sure that you adjust where your needle is in the thread here is how it can double up when you're not paying attention because I didn't pull this through all the way so just make sure you're always aware because the last thing you want to do is have to go through and find where you're where you lost your thread so I'm just pulling giving myself some extra room so that you don't start to stitch double so I'm gonna look at this X again and now at this point it's a little more tangly than it was before a little less clear but it's an X that's one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna go up through this, which now it's giving me a little bit of room. And then down. Through that hole. Up. Looking at that X, it's just like it's there for me to identify because of how open it is from the last pull through. All right, so now I'm at the end of this and I'm gonna make sure I pull this snug. I've got nice consistent tension, fold this back down. I'm gonna go underneath and off the edge of the book. So now, ooh, you see that? that little loosey-goosey part? I don't want that to be loose. So I'm gonna open this up and pull that little looseness. I'm gonna pull it all the way through. I'm happy that happened. But you don't wanna pull it too tight because these pages will kind of make a little C. So, you, so as you sew, you'll start to get a feel for that tension. We're gonna add our next one and it's pretty much gonna be the same from here on out until we get to the very end and we knot it. I'm gonna end this by going underneath here and then going, I'm gonna make sure I pull this extra piece out and I'm just gonna make a knot. So I went underneath, I left a little loop. I'm gonna put this needle through and I'm gonna pull this 
snug. Again, not too tight, you don't want to tear anything. But I'm gonna pull that snug and then I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna go back underneath. I'm gonna leave this little loop here and I'm gonna pull it tight. Move that knot down. And so my book looks like this. Because my thread is waxed, I'm just gonna snip it and leave it. But it's always good to put a little dollop of glue on that end to hold it together. Now this, you can decide whether or not you wanna tie this, but you can just take your needle off the other, the other side, put it on here, and I'm just gonna send my needle through backwards since I didn't give myself enough room. There's one, there's one knot. And you wanna do a double knot cause that really won't hold. All right, so I made my knot. Again, put a little dollop of glue. I'm using wax thread, so I'm just gonna snip it. Looks nice and even. Now I'm gonna take my glue. So at this point, if your, if your fabric is uneven, you can give it a slight shimmy. You do not wanna to pull too hard because it'll fly right out. So really it's best to line it up where you want in the beginning. And I'm pretty happy with this length. Sometimes I make it longer in the back. Um, if you like it even, you could just trim it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of glue. This is bookbinding glue, but Elmer's glue um, works because you're just looking for a, a adhesive that's like that's flexible, that allows you to move your book. So I'm gonna put the glue on here. And I also like to put just a little bit right up on the page so I know that it that I'm getting that spot. So for the first side, you don't really have to pull. You just have to press it down. Because this is like a gauzy vintage fabric, it's coming through. So I just blotted it with my hand. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I put it on the fabric and not on the book so that I don't have like a big splotchy guess of glue on my page. Again, I just put some down right here so I make sure that it's nice and tight at that meeting point. All right, so I'm flattening this out and pressing it. And then I'm gonna let that dry. All right, my glue is dry and I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna tap this down again just to make sure everything's square. And I like to um, pinch this together and tug a little bit so that I make sure I'm pulling these pages snug so that, so that these come together really nicely. Put my book down because it's on the back and I'm gonna keep this full length. And I like this little detail of this old fabric. I'm a little messy when I glue, so um, you can use a brush or um, or you can use your fingers and be messy too, because sometimes it's just fun. So I'm pulling this down, press with my hand, and then I'm gonna let this side dry. And then we're gonna have a look at what we've got. My book is complete. It's dry, finished, looks pretty cool, and is ready for me to do something on the cover. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but often, as you've seen from my other examples, I, I draw on them or make quotes on my books. Um, you can decoupage, you can do whatever you want. These books are fantastic little journals because they've got um, the quality of paper you want. They're really nicely bound together. They lay flat. They're not too precious and they start to get a really lovely patina as you use it.